Exploring space has been humanity's dream for centuries, but now it's a reality. Astronauts have been going out of Earth's orbit for almost six decades now, and with Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos' forays into space, the goal of regular commercial flights is closer than ever. But hold on to your hats, space travelers. There's a few things you should know. Welcome to Fact Nominal, and today we'll be taking a look at the 10 things you most definitely cannot do in space. Be sure to stay until the end of our video to learn all about the things you shouldn't do in space, and also subscribe to our channel for more great content like this. Now let's get into it. Number 10, no showers. Space travel takes minimalist living to a whole other level. Every resource is invaluable, and you have to be as efficient as possible in using it. Water is arguably the most precious commodity of them all. It is very difficult to transport because of its heavy weight, and managing it is key to survival in space. Instead of full-blown showers, all astronauts can hope for is a sponge bath using distilled water from air humidity and human waste. It's not your average body scrub, but it does the trick. The same goes for washing clothes and other forms of personal hygiene. So if you dream of exploring the universe, leave the bath bombs at home. Number nine, how a Tex-Mex favorite became a NASA staple. Newsflash, your eating habits may have to change if you want to see space firsthand. I know you finally adjusted to the gluten-free bread your friend recommended, but you're going to have to drop the slices. Some everyday consumption goods like bread are a no-go in space. Sneaking bread on board and trying to make your favorite sandwich would most likely result in crumbs, which can potentially damage equipment or be accidentally inhaled by astronauts. Tortillas are crumbless, and so it's no surprise that they are one of the most popular options for astronauts looking to get that sandwich fix. From peanut butter and jelly burritos to breakfast tacos, the tortilla is the real MVP on space flights. Number eight, alcohol. If you're a bit more than a social drinker, space might not be the place for you. Not only are astronauts forbidden to be intoxicated at liftoff, consuming alcohol while in space is strictly forbidden. There was an attempt in 1972 to make alcohol a part of an astronaut's diet at the International Space Station. However, the decision was met by outrage over the prospect of drunk astronauts in space. Despite all of that, wine was actually the first liquid to be consumed on the surface of the moon. Buzz Aldrin, the second man to set foot onto the moon, confessed in an interview that he received special permission to take bread and wine with him into space to take part in the Christian rite of communion. Apart from a couple of instances, all space agencies have strict rules against alcohol in space. So even after a successful journey thousands of miles around the Earth, astronauts can't hope to have a cocktail to unwind. If you think an alcohol ban is bad, wait until you hear the next one. Number seven, 227 Mile High Club. The act of pleasure isn't as forbidden as it is difficult. Anderson University physicist and astronomer John Millis, PhD, commented, quote, every push or thrust will propel the astronaut in the opposite direction. Imagine a pair of ice skaters standing on fresh ice. If they were to push their hands against one another, they would each shoot backwards away from each other. Unquote. So astronauts would have to be properly anchored, not only to the space station itself, but also to each other. This makes the mechanics of the sex act very difficult and probably somewhat awkward. But that's not the only complication. If sex were successful, weightlessness could cause a miscarriage or ectopic pregnancy, and the high levels of radiation in space could cause cell deformation and mutation in the fetus. So what do you think of these things you can't do in space so far? Let us know what you think in the comments, and make sure to stay until the end. You're going to be shocked to learn what's at the top of this list. Number six, we have talked of the difficulties of personal hygiene in space, but when nature calls, you pretty much have to go. However, the task of completing the number two isn't as straightforward. Astronauts on board the International Space Station strap themselves into specially designed toilets for solid waste and use a vacuum tube with different sized funnels for liquid waste. There's no door to the bathroom, just a curtain, and the waste is stored in specially designed plastic bags. According to astronaut Peggy Whitson, if the plastic bags are all too full, astronauts must put a rubber glove on and pack it down. Ugh, not the most appealing task, is it? Well, guess what? 
it gets worse. There are times when the toilet malfunctions, leaving astronauts in a room full of floating poo. When you can't avoid nature's call, there's another difficult situation that you should avoid for a safe trip. Number five, space surgery. Wounds and injuries can be devastating anywhere, but one place you really want to really avoid them is in space. The medical facilities on the International Space Station are primitive to say the least, and have about the same level of equipment as a typical public swimming pool. Medical doctor and NASA astronaut Michael Barat confessed, quote, we can stabilize someone who has a dramatic injury, but we can't sustain a patient for long, unquote. Low gravity environments pose a greater risk as the wound and fracture healing process is slowed down greatly. Microbes and viruses become more virulent in space, possibly leading to food poisoning, antibiotic resistance, and hard to treat infections. Fortunately, the medical problems experienced by the ISS crews have not been life-threatening. Only one astronaut, Italian Luca Parmitano, has come close to serious injury after nearly drowning after water leaked into his helmet during a spacewalk. Number four, traveling into space is undoubtedly one of the greatest achievements in human history. Reaching those heights and exploring the secrets of the universe has to be an emotional roller coaster, one worthy of shedding a few tears. However, it's a completely different experience in space. Tears stick around the eye and form a liquid ball. They sting quite a bit, and the giant clump may break away from your skin to float away. So leave the crying to your bachelor binge watching sessions. Number three, sleeping on a nice comfy bed. The alarm clock goes off, so you hit the snooze button, roll over and fall back into a deep sleep, all while lying comfortably on your pillow top mattress. Ah, yeah, you can forget about that if you plan on traveling to space. Given the weightlessness, there's no up or down and everything is floating. To make things even more confusing, the astronauts in space can't coordinate sleeping patterns according to the sun. The International Space Station orbits the Earth every 92 minutes, so there can be up to 16 sunsets in a 24-hour period. In order to sleep, you'll have to crawl into a sleeping bag that is anchored to the floor or the ceiling. The sleeping place has to be well ventilated as the carbon dioxide exhaled during sleep may linger in the air and form bubbles, so you may wake up air deprived. When it comes to ventilation and air quality, space travelers have to assume another huge responsibility. Number two, farts. When you're on Earth, it's easy to not think too much about letting one rip. After all, it'll dissipate and clear out in a few seconds, and chances are no one will find out your smelly secret. Sorry to tell you, that's an absolute no-go in space. Even though your smelling powers are slightly subdued, you're in such close quarters that literally everyone can smell it. Not only that, with nowhere to go, the smell lingers for longer periods of time and makes for a terrible experience for you and your crewmates. To make matters worse, it could also potentially make people sick. It applies to all scents, and you can't just go around spraying your cologne to make things better. Excess smells could lead to headaches and even suffocation due to the excess sweetness in the fragrance. Number one, sneezing. If you didn't already know, when you sneeze, you release a whole lot of droplets into the air. Most of them aren't the hygienic sort. Many of these droplets could be potentially carrying infectious germs that I'm quite certain you don't want to have on board in a space station. To top it off, due to the zero gravity out in space, the moment you sneeze, you'll be flung back, almost like the recoil of a gun. This can be very dangerous for people around you as well as yourself. Even though sneezing is quite an involuntary sort of action, your best bet is to aim in the right direction and never sneeze inside your helmet, unless you want a hazy view. So, what do you think about these normal things we can do on Earth, but are unable to do in space? Let us know in the comments. Also, make sure to leave our video a like and subscribe to Fact Nominal for more great content like this. We'll see you next time.